welcome to another, but yet a special episode of Arbitration Life. We have Hannah joining us in Paris while I'm here in the BPI. I am Janet Bryn. And I'm Hannah Dumas. Yes. <laughs> Growing up traditionally as young people, we say to mom and dad, I want to be a doctor, artist, a lawyer. For me personally, I wanted to be an architect until I realized I absolutely hated math. So set on my journey on being a marketer and entrepreneur, who knew I would end up being the center manager of the BVI International Arbitration Center? What about you, Hannah? Well, for me, Jeanette, as a child, yeah, it was either a lawyer or a journalist. And uh, it's, it's a quite funny and I, in, that I enjoy interviewing people as much. And I think that's ah. the wannabe journalist in me. There are a variety of career opportunities within arbitration. Our various guests of Arbitration Life highlighted all so well. As we have interviewed arbitration counsel, full-time arbitrators, tribunal secretaries, we have also interviewed a court reporter. However, today's guest is a law professor whose research and practice fields are private international law and international business law. Yes, she was awarded a doctorate in law from the University Paris 1 Panthéon Sorbonne for her PhD thesis dedicated to the extraterritorial injunctions of judges in private international litigation. In 1999, she was named uh, later senior lecturer at the University of Reims Champagne Ardennes in 2000 before being appointed full professor in private law and criminology in 2003. As a professor, she joined the University of Bretagne Sud in 2003, and finally the University of Versailles saint quentin en yvelines in 2006. Her academic career has been marked notably by the deanship of the University of Versailles saint quentin en yvelines Faculty of Law and Political Science from 2012 to 2017, and of the Law School of Paris-Saclay University from 2016 to 2019. From June 2014 to June 2020, she chaired the French National Conference of Deans of Law and Political Science Faculties. She has always practiced law in law firms or as an independent consultant, although she dedicated most of her time in the recent years to university and public institutions. Since February 2019, she sits appointed by the French President of the Republic for a term of four years as a member of a French Consul for Judiciary, Le Conseil Supérieur de la Magistrature, where I am today. Her research and practice fields are private international law and international business law with a focus on international contracts and international litigation, including arbitration. She is now developing new researches related to ethics and international business law. She authored a textbook on French private international law, uh, many academic articles on private international law, international business law and arbitration. And she co-authored a compendium of the private international text applicable in France. Please welcome Professor Sandrine Clavel. Hi Sandrine, welcome to Arbitration Life. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, Hannah. And hi to everyone. It's very nice to be with you tonight. Yeah. Hi, Jeanette. Well, and morning for me. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that we're doing something different today. Yeah, it's nice. So I want to kick off today's interview by asking you, could you please tell us more about your current role at the French Council for Justice? I can't pronounce the council. So you'll have to help me with my French. Le, oh. conseil, le conseil supérieur de la magistrature. Nice, it sounds beautiful. <laughs> so tell us about that role. Okay, well, um, well, in the French constitution, um, the, the president of the Republic uh, is um, supposed to guarantee the independence of uh, the judiciary and the council, the Conseil Super de la Magistrature, uh, is to assist him in this function. So 
Um, this means that, uh, well, basically we are going to be the council for the presidents whenever there is an issue regarding the independence of judges, he can ask the council to deliver opinions on the issue. Just to give you an example, at the moment we are finalizing an opinion um, dedicated to the, well, there is to be a reform, maybe, of the uh, regime of responsibility of judges. Mm -hmm. And uh, before going on with the reform, the president asked the council to deliver an opinion as to what should be the boundaries not to go beyond um, and what are the major issues that should, should be dealt with in, in the reform. So that's the, 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 the first uh, and maybe most important role um, in theory of the council or intellectually uh, the, the, the most important role because in practice um, what we are doing the most is um, appointing judges, mm -hmm. uh, not all of them, only some of them. Um, and for the others that we are not directly uh, appointing ourselves, um, we, have a, um, we are monitoring the appointment of these judges um, that is made by the Ministry of Justice. And of course, we are also in charge um, for the uh, discipline, or, uh, discipline of judges. Okay. Uh, and, um, and just to, to, to conclude, I would say that the council is uh, composed um, of uh, judges, but also non-judges, um, personalities that are not judges. And well, here I am. That's <laughs> why I was asked to, to be part of the council. Yeah, sounds exciting. Thank you for sharing. And that's a perfect transition because you are a law professor, a former dean of the University of Versailles, uh, and uh, of the law and political science, uh, the faculty, sorry, of law and political science, as well as the law school of Paris Saclay University. And you also chaired the French National Conference of Deans of Law uh, and Political Science Faculties. Uh, for 13 years, you were one of the two members of the executive team running the, French, the first French full program uh, master program in arbitration and international business law, Le Massy, how we call it, with Professor Thomas Klein and then Professor Maximon de Fournichel. And I had the chance of being one of your students 10 years ago. And a very good one. <laughs> of course you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to say, you could tell us. <laughs> no, just kidding. Go ahead. What is the truth? No, I will, it's true. I have like a real passion for carving international. So I was like, uh, yeah, I was very active in your, during your classes. It's true, it's true. <laughs> I want to ask you, what is your favorite thing about teaching? Um, and can you please tell us more about your role as a director of an arbitration master program? Okay. Well, I think what I like most in teaching is um, maybe that you are always questioning your own knowledge. So. It is like a never ending brainstorming. Mm -hmm. um, everything is always changing, never, uh, nothing is never granted. Mm -hmm. um, the law changes, students are changing also, mm -hmm. and, and also the world is changing. So, well, now I've been a professor for like more than, well, for a long, long time. I should not be saying. I uh, get all the data, <laughs> so everyone knows. So, I don't know, I'm, I think more uh, like 20 years. Um, and I just, I'm not bored. Uh, it's just always different. And I have the feeling that I'm more, I am more and more intelligent, not yeah, like yeah. being intelligent, but that my ability um, to think uh, and to think the world mm -hmm. is improving. Yeah. Um, and, and to see low not as something that is very technical and you're going just to apply law, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a whole system. And um, I think it is very important to, to, to understand that law is a system because it is, well, we usually we say it's the glue that holds society together. Yeah. So um, um, as a professor, I feel that uh, I should be able first to understand myself that it is not only about rules that you are going to apply uh, and 
as a teacher, I think that uh, my duty is to teach students that it is not only rules yeah. that you are going to apply, that um, you have as a, as a lawyer, you have responsibility. Uh, and, uh, and well, just to, to, to maybe say a little bit more about the, the, the master program, the arbitration master program, I guess um, it was already, already back in these years when I was uh, uh, heading this program, my idea was to, to share these values uh, with the students. It's very important. Uh, and it is especially important in arbitration because arbitration is about business. Yeah. And of course, business, we need business. It's very important for the well, welfare of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, well, with business, you can also have perverse effects. Yeah. And so I think it is very important that arbitration lower, uh, lawyers be, be aware of um, the ethics, the values that are behind uh, the implementation of law yeah. in, in courts, but also in arbitration. Yeah. So I guess that should be my answer to your question. That's a great <laughs> answer. That's very inspiring. Thank you. So what I find interesting is that you actually know what it's like to be on both sides as a professor, but you've previously worked as counsel in arbitration in law firms and as an independent consultant. What would you say is your favorite thing or what was your favorite thing about that role in as an independent consultant or a private practice with a lawyer, sorry, with a law firm? Um, well, can I can I give you two answers? Because actually sure. there were two that I really loved. Um, okay. The first I, I really liked was that um, well, when you are a law professor, uh, you are always thinking about complex issues. But I mean, when you are in practice, you are facing issues you would never imagine they could actually happen because right. practice is so inventive when it comes to weird questions and, and situation. Uh, so it is really challenging because, well, when you're a law professor and, uh, well, first of all, you, you kind of think about all the types of difficulties that could occur and, and practice brings you this kind of, um, facts that you need so that you can really think about uh, uh, the, the, the improvement you can bring to the system. And I think the, the other part of the answer I would like to give is that um, when you are practicing, you, well, you have to stand for your clients. Mm -hmm. And it means that even if he is not on the, on the good side of yeah. the law, you just have to find solutions. So you have to be creative. Uh, whereas when, you, when you're a professor and you're writing, for example, an article, mm -hmm. at one point you would just say, well, no, this is not good. We should not be doing that. Uh, or, oh, this is difficult. We don't have any answer for that. And well, that's it. We don't have any answer. Yeah. Um, but when you're in court or, or I, I, before I, an arbitration tri uh, tribunal, you, you, yeah. you cannot say, oh, well, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer. And I think that, uh, that we should not be doing that. You just have to find the answer and explain that, well, it's a very good thing we are doing that and, and give good arguments are going to, to convince, <clears throat> sorry, the, the, the judges or, or the arbitrators. So this is what I like. It was very challenging. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I think you really described it perfectly, the, the yeah. work as a, as a counsel. Um, so now you focus on arbitration only from a theoretical standpoint. What is, in your view, the most fascinating thing about arbitration? Um, now, this one is a bit difficult question because I don't want to be too long uh, in the answer. Uh, and I, I, could, I could obviously talk about that for like ages. Um, well, I think I have 
first to tell you what was at the beginning my, my, my main interest in arbitration. And my main interest in arbitration was the interaction between arbitration and state courts. Mm -hmm. um, and now um, what we can see is that, well, at least in France, and I guess it is um, the same thing elsewhere, um, we have more and more arbitration that is going to um, replace state courts. Yes. Because at the moment in, the, in, in uh, uh, state courts in France, um, we have so many cases that judges cannot really take the time to work uh, very deeply the, 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 the cases that they are, uh, that they are uh, dealing with. And of course, when you have this big complex cases, it is an issue. Um, and well, so, well, we, are, we can observe that mm. arbitration is going certainly to replace not all uh, the, the situation, uh, um, not, um, not, not, is going to replace state courts, not in all situations, yeah. but in many situations. And this, brought me to um, deal with uh, another issue, uh, and it is how we manage to um, protect the general interests when uh, cases are uh, dealt with in arbitration with a private judge. Mm -hmm. And this private judge, um, he, the private judge is here because the parties want them yeah. want him to be there. So I'm always wondering whether he, he, he will not be willing to favor the private interests of the parties and maybe not always consider, consider the general interests. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, that the, the state judge is going to do that. The st state judge, he has an civil or commercial state judge is going to consider the private interests of the parties, but he, he will always have in somewhere in his, in his head the fact that the idea that I should be careful that I'm not going to um, contradict the, the general interest. And I think that the more and more arbitration is going to replace state courts, um, the more we will have to accept that at one point, the general interest has to find its way in the arbitration process. Mm -hmm. And how uh, is it the, we sh sh should we change the, 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 the way arbitrators are thinking? Um, should we have rules that are going to monitor uh, the arbitration more than we are doing at the moment? I'm not sure that's the good solution, um, but then, well, we have all these questions that we should be uh, asking ourselves, and this is what I find at the moment very, very interesting. It interesting. is, yeah, it is indeed fascinating. Yeah. Very, very interesting. I don't think we talk about general interest as much uh, in, in arbitration, actually. We, we do um, in investment arbitration. Yes, yeah, and of course, the, 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 the interesting issue is whether we can also uh, include these types of uh, issues uh, within um, international commercial arbitration, where obviously we're not talking about general interests. <laughs> Very true. So what would you say was one of your biggest challenges or difficulties faced throughout your career? And would you say that any of those difficulties had any gender bias to it? Uh, well, let me first tell you what is the, I think the, 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 the most important difficulties I've, I faced, and then I will think whether it was gender bias or not. Um, I think that the, the most difficult for me was to feel legitimate. Um, I, well, I've been doing some things in my life, uh, in my career, um, but I never felt legitimate because I was always, thinking that, well, I'm not good enough, uh, um, why me, uh, uh, maybe I'm not the one 
to, to do that or to, 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 to fulfill this, uh, this task. And well, there were two consequences uh, to that. The first one was that I never claimed for any position. Um, for almost all positions I got, um, I was asked, usually by male uh, uh, colleagues, uh, to take the, the position. Uh, I was asked to join the, the council. I was asked to become the dean. I was asked to become the, the, the president of the conference of the dean, uh, of the deans. So, and that's because I would not have dared uh, to 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 claim for this position because I didn't feel legitimate. Um, that's even more impressive that they just, I mean, yeah, yeah, well, I don't know if it is because yes, it, is. it is. You didn't even claim for yeah, it. They yeah. just asked that it says something really big of you that you were sought out for all these opportunities. Yeah. So I applaud you and those accomplishments. Yeah, but then, you know, you, you asked me about this uh, gender bias, uh, diversity uh, bias, and, and, and I really yeah. wonder whether, uh, well, I cannot, I cannot, you, as I just told you, it was usually male colleagues mm. that helped me going through. Uh, you, you, can, you should be doing it because you're the right person. So I never met any man colleague or male colleague telling me that I was not legitimate to do something. Right. Uh, but in a way, it is also gender bias because I am quite convinced that this is something that most women think. Uh, many women think that they are not legitimate. Mm. Uh, and so, um, well, nowadays, I really wonder whether, what, what would have been my career if I had claimed for the things uh, I, I could expect, actually, because when, when I did uh, these uh, um, well, tasks, I, I think I did right. Yeah. So if I had to give a piece of advice to all uh, women that are uh, young women that are thinking about making a career is uh, they should always feel legitimate because actually how male colleagues they do feel legitimate so yeah. they name positions and uh, and then they get them <laughs> absolutely i think that's a great advice and this whole discussion like it's about imposter syndrome it's mm -hmm. exactly. it's exactly that nowadays it's and i think yeah I don't know if it's more, yeah, probably more women than men. Ah, there's there's sure. statistics yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, sometimes I even dream nowadays that I'm like the, an imposter. Like when I wake up in the morning, um, my dream was um, everybody thought like I had this degree, mm -hmm. and uh, actually I did. I didn't. So I was like, oh, they are going to find out I don't have the degree and it's going to be awful. <laughs> and then when I wake up in the morning, it's just like, oh, what did I do? I did something very wrong. Like, and then I realized, oh, but I do have the degree, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. This is definitely about that. It's actually a TV show when we ask, uh, this question will come later, but it suits basically. This TV show <laughs> man, basically one of the loose doesn't have a degree. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you dreamed about that. Wow. But you know, I think it says a lot, and thank you for sharing because we don't talk about that enough, especially in the law profession. Mm -hmm. And this is something that yeah, everyone go through. And uh, no, it's even more impressive coming from you, like such a accomplished. Uh, Law professor yeah. now at the Faculty de la Magistrature. Yeah. That you say that it just it's very real. So thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and I think you actually already um, answered my next question, but I'm sure you can come up with another answer. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to students who are uh, thinking of pursuing a career? Uh, actually, I'm going to specify the question. A career as an academic, not just in arbitration. Um, well, if I may be a little bit provocative, mm -hmm. I would say do not. Oh, wow. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> do not, because I think that, well, at least in France at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, it's very, it's, it's not rewarding. It's not, no, I should not 
be saying that. It's, it's rewarding when you're a professor, when you, you are actually in the career, because it's so nice to be interacting with students and research is just great. So the job is, is great. Um, but nowadays it's very difficult first of all, to get a position because uh, we, well, we don't have any more money in, in, in public universities. Yeah. So uh, it is more and more difficult to uh, be able to recruit professors. So of course, for new, uh, um, for, for young researchers, uh, it is really a challenge to uh, be able to enter the career. So now when I have students coming uh, to see me, telling me I want to, uh, make a PhD and then I would like to be an academic. Of course, I'm very happy, but it is such a big responsibility for me uh, to, to say, okay, you, okay, I, I will help you. Uh, but then uh, I just have to tell them that there is a, a risk that is, that is important, that they will not be able to enter the career. Yeah. And of course, it is very frustrating when it is what you want to do. So, well, my advice would be, if you really want to be an academic and uh, um, you are going to start with a PhD, uh, you should always be careful. And in French, we say, ne mettez pas tous vos œufs dans, un, dans le même panier, which means, okay, you can go for the PhD, but you should make sure that you are going also to practice a little bit on the side, to meet lawyers, and so that if the academic career doesn't work, you will all, it, will, it will not be too late to be a practitioner, yeah. well, certainly or, maybe a lawyer, yeah. uh, and it is going to be also very re re rewarding. Um, so that would be really, the, 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 the advice I would give. Uh, actually, this is the one I am given, giving all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so don't put your, all your eggs in the same bag. Yeah. Like you can be a law professor, but like you're supposed to have a plan B and yeah, and be a lawyer too, because it's really fun. Yeah, a, a counsel, yeah. yeah. So would you say that that would have been or is your greatest lesson that you've learned throughout your career? To, to not put all your eggs in one basket? Uh, not for me. Actually, it didn't. I was very lucky, so it didn't work for me this way. I, I, I could have. I didn't, but I could have put my all my eggs in in, in one one basket. But so so maybe I will give you more. A, well, the lesson I personally uh, learned was the following: um, you should you should not make any plan for your career because because opportunities are going to occur and yeah. it's very important you 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 can you you cannot imagine what is going to to, to happen to you um i would have never imagined i would become a member of the conseil superior de la magistrature, de la magistrature when they call me actually uh to tell me well maybe it is going to be you we would like to, to know if you want to i was like why me? <laughs> that, that's, that's strange because I, I am more in international law, arbitration, why me? And they told me, well, this is interesting yeah. also to, to have someone that is aware of international law. Um, and so opportunities are going to occur and it's, it's very nice to, to be open-minded and to be ready to accept these opportunities. So this is really the lesson uh, I personally uh, learned during my career. Yeah, thank you for that. I could definitely agree. Um, I, I'm a testimony to that. <laughs> you can't plan because who knew I would be here at the arbitration center? So yes. I know you were seeing that earlier. Yeah. And I totally yeah. second that because same for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. life is just funny that way. Things change, opportunities arise. You end up moving from one country to the next. You know, the world changes, pandemics happen and you just have to be ready for yeah. whatever <laughs> and for the best usually and for the best yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. so on that yeah. note um hannah would have alluded to it earlier we love to ask our guests about what tv shows they've been getting into um that have le legal themes to them so suits 
are how to get away with murder, what do you watch? Uh, well, I'm sorry to say never so suits. Okay, I, 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 I was, everybody <laughs> told me about yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but how to get away with murder? I did. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and she's a law professor. So. Yeah. And, and a practitioner at the same time. So that's great. Yeah, so cool. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you so much for joining us on this special episode of Arbitration Life, where I'm in the British Virgin Islands. And you too, Hannah, along with Sandrine. Sandrine oh, I love the French right? accent. I'm trying to work on my French hair. I want to say it with that finesse. <laughs> That's very good. Joining us in, from Paris. Thank you so much. Thank you to both of you, of you and uh, it was really a pleasure, pleasure to join you. Yeah. And likewise, it was really a pleasure to interview you today. Many thanks to Professor Sandrine Clavel for taking the time out of her busy schedule to join us here on Arbitration Life, and my colleague Hannah for joining us as well with Sandrine over there in Paris. We thank you so much. For more Arbitration Life, please be sure to hit the subscribe button, plus follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Arbitration Life. Mm -hmm.